In today's episode on Cinema 4D, we're going to create some water using the Jiggle Deformer and some turbulence. And yes, I know that sounds absolutely hilarious that there are really powerful 3D tools called the Jiggle Deformer, but it's awesome. So in the last episode, we created this tree and we have the grass in here. We created this terrain in the very, very first episode. And now what we need is some water and we need that water to be able to loop. So what I'm first going to do is come over here and select plane. And our plane needs to be a little bit bigger and also needs to come forward. I'm going to pause this so it stops doing those calculations in the meantime. Now I can better see where my plane is. Stretch it out a little bit. We want it to intersect. I'd like this to have some more segments because we're going to have some deformation added to this. And if you'll notice, my um, camera is set up at a 50 focal length. It has a Redshift camera tag since I will be rendering in Redshift eventually. I'd like this to intersect our land a little bit. And what we're actually going to use to create turbulence and deformation with this plane and have it loop, believe it or not, I'm going to use a jiggle deformer. And I know that sounds hilarious, just the word, but it's a great tool. <laughs> um, and I'm also going to use under simulate forces turbulence and that turbulence is going to be dropped under the Forces tab in the Jiggle Deformer. Just for right now, for the purpose of speed, I'm going to turn off the Forces in our tree and in our grass so they aren't going to be blowing in the wind anymore. So we can just focus on editing this plane. If we hit play right now, Nothing is happening, although we dropped in turbulence. What we need to do is reduce the amount of stiffness. And actually, we also need to make this plane editable. The turbulence strength needs to be increased. And now you can see something that's starting to look like waves. There's some different modes you can choose. And we can see what each one of these look like right now. This is force. This is acceleration. Aerodynamics, wind. Um, so you have some options there. Can adjust the speed and really make this look slow motion and make these waves much larger. Adjust the frequency of them. So this is very interesting to just play around with.
And now that we have this nice motion here, I'd like to try dropping this into a subdivision surface because that really helps smooth it out some more. Our animation, you can even see what this would look like from our camera view. So I think the waves would move a little bit faster. So I'm going to make, I'm going to adjust the frequency. make the scale a little bit smaller. I think this is looking pretty good for our basic material um, deformation in here. And we're going to actually make this loop. And in order to do that, we need to make sure that point level animation is turned on. And I'll also need to fix this because at the beginning there is no deformation happening. So the to begin with, um, the reason why we're turning on point level animation is because this is going to allow us to keyframe objects on the vertex level with the points and otherwise you wouldn't be able to do that and we need to be able to do that to record these changes in the surface. And in the Jiggle Deformer you'll see that there's this tab called Cache and Cache will allow for this to run its calculations so that it's easy to preview. If we go back and forth, oh my gosh, this is going crazy. Um, and it'll fix that if we cache this. So we will, we will do that. So the first thing that I'd like to do here is I'd actually like to make this plane a editable object and the reason why I want to do that is I want it to start off with these deformations before we even start editing it. So I'll say current state to object. I'll turn off the original here. I'll name this original. And you'll see we have this plane here. And this is our new object. So I'll name this plane water. And I will copy this jiggle deformer, put it under water, and I'll also create a subdivision surface to drop the water within so that we don't lose that. But for right now, I'm going to turn off subdivision surface and now we still have our turbulence affecting the water. And we still have a deformation happening. And what we'll need to do here is cache out our jiggle deformer. Um, and then this way, when we scroll forwards and backwards, we have that ability and we don't have exploding polygons, as you can see here. So going back here, we're going to hit calculate under the cache tab for the jiggle deformer. And there it goes. And now we can scroll back and forth, no problem. And we have this lovely water deformation. And we can also turn on our subdivision surface with that to see that animation happening. Now this is not looping, as you can see, there's this jump after frame 90. 
And in the last episodes, we got our tree and we got our grass to be able to simulate a loop um, every 90 frames. And we've lost that with our water. So we're going to need to do that. And there's a little bit of a workaround in order to do that. And basically what it is, is to open up our dope sheet. So now that we have our water and jiggle deformer inside of our dope sheet, what I actually need to do is click on water, go up to functions, and hit bake objects. This will bake out all of the vertice animations. And that's why we need this button down here clicked so that we can do that. And we need all of these baked out for 90 frames. I'll hit OK. And now we have a keyframe for every single part of this animation. And not only do we have a keyframe for each single part of this animation, but it created a copy for us. So actually I'll turn off this in here, the old water. I'll name this not baked because that animation is not baked out. But this water is because now we have all these keyframes. So this is the new object we had created with all these keyframes. So now that we have all these keyframes selected, I'm going to hit copy. I'm actually going to copy it by clicking on all of them, holding down control, and dragging this all the way over here. And now we have a copy. I'm going to drag this a little bit further back so that it starts at 91, because that's the beginning of our new, that's when it's going to loop. And I'm going to delete frame 90, 89, and 88. And what that will do is, since we have a keyframe here, and we have the keyframe at 91 of what our animation will be at the beginning, at frame zero, it will morph from frame 87 to 91. And 91 is the same as zero. So that'll create a nice clean looping transition. So that's the way to make this happen, even though there's no loop button for the jiggle deformer, none that I've ever been able to find. You can't really loop it. Um, so that gives you an ability to do that. Go back to the beginning and hit play. And you can see here that it is looping and it's lovely. And if you want to test this out, your, your lovely new animation, you can click Make Preview. As always, choose all frames. I'm going to adjust the image size. Maybe I'll multiply that by two and it'll, and I clicked Enter and now it's beginning to calculate. You can see it down here. It's calculating pretty quickly because this is all, um, all baked out and cached. So it has fewer calculations to do. Um, it doesn't look as smooth right now, but if you want it to look smoother, what you can do is just up the subdivision. So if you want to make the water look smoother, just up the subdivisions in your subdivision surface, and then you'll be good to go. So that pretty much wraps up how to create water with a jiggle deformer and jiggle deformers are hilarious just because their name. 
So I hope you had fun learning about how to do this. I know I did have fun doing it. Um, so catch you on the next episode. Speaking of which, the next episode will be on lighting, so stay tuned for that.